Hi you guys, so today I am going to be reviewing and doing kind of a first impressions on the Maybelline and Gigi Hadid collection. I have heard lots of mixed reviews on this collection, but I definitely want to form my own opinions. Now right now I just have on brows and foundation, I have no concealer, nothing like that on because I want to try all these products. None of these were sent to me, this is all stuff that I actually went to Ulta on the 5th when it came in stores and picked up with my own money. And um, obviously Ulta did not have a big variety. They of course had the Jet Setter palette, they only had the Warm Eyeshadow palette, they only had the red lipsticks, two of the eyeliners, they didn't really have a ton of the collection available in store, which was kind of disappointing. I wanted to pick up a bigger variety of the collection, but I think I got fairly decent cross-section. Um, I didn't choose to pick up the liquid highlighters and I also didn't choose to pick up the tinted moisturizers, primers, whatever they are because the only color they had available was medium deep and there is no way, it was like a dark chocolate color, there's no way it would have even worked as a contour on my skin, obviously. So, let me show you guys what I did pick up. I picked up the Jet Setter palette, of course. I grabbed this eyeshadow palette. This is the Warm palette. I grabbed one lipstick in the shade Lani. And I also got the gel eyeliner in Nude. So I'm going to go through these things one by one, show them up close to you guys, and talk about them a little bit more. So first up, the Jet Setter palette. First up, gorgeous packaging. I love the outer sleeve. Here is the palette itself. It is this nice pale pink color. It's really cute. It's a very hefty palette. It feels fairly sturdy and you have this really pretty hollow ribbon on the outside of it. Not ribbon, but the edges are hollow. And so is the wording on it. It's really cute. It has a list on it, what it has on the back. And then you open it up and you have this great big mirror up here, which I really, really like. Two concealer shades, a light and a medium. Two lip gloss shades, a nude and kind of a pinky tone. Comes with two brushes, a dual-ended um, eyeshadow brush and a blush brush. You get four shades of eyeshadow. You get a highlight shade a kind of a bl darker blush pink, a brown, and a black, which can also be used as an eyeliner. And you have a very bright pink blush, a bronzer slash contour color, and a large highlight palette. And then you also have this wrapped mascara. Some people have been confused about what mascara comes with this palette, so I wanted to get into this. This has a wrap on it that is the Gigi Hadid logo on it. But when you open it up, it isn't the fiber mascara that comes with the collection. You actually open this up and take the packaging off, and it's the Maybelline the Colossal Volume Express Mascara. So it isn't the fiber mascara that's part of the collection. It's just basically an overpackaging of the Colossal Volume Express, which I haven't tried, so I will definitely give this a shot today. My opinions on this palette just at first glance, so-so. I want to check out these brushes. If you're going to include brushes in a palette at this point, they better be good. And this is not, I can tell. Um, the bristles on this blush slash contour brush are blunt cut. They're not taper cut, which means they feel very, very rough. And I can tell you right now, this will not blend anything. It feels scratchy on your skin, not comfortable at all. So I'm not going to use that, unfortunately. I do like brushes in palettes if they're good. If they're good is the uh, big part on that. And here's the other brush. This is the dual-sided eyeshadow brush. This one actually feels a little bit nicer, but it's really weird to use because I have pretty tiny hands and fingers and even any color that's on either end is going to smear all over your hands. So I would have just, honestly, I would have left these out of the palette. If that was me, I would have left them out of the palette. I would have maybe put the eyeshadows over, like push the eyeshadows and had them here and then have done one, two, like three bigger pans for the blush, bronzer, and highlight. I would have done bigger pans and more square pans because that's the blush and this is my blush brush. So yeah, 
anyone who isn't planning on using these brushes is going to have a heck of a time getting a brush in there, so that is a concern. This palette is obviously fine for me. The colors would work fine for me. However, the Jet Setter palette only comes in one tone, and that's for pale girls like Gigi and me. Anyone who has deeper skin tone than a medium light is going to have a heck of a time using this palette. The concealers will not work. Um, the highlight would work on um, the blush. That particular color of blush doesn't work great on everyone. So it's not a super universal palette. She could have made it feel more universal by leaving the concealers out, which is what I would have done in that case just because you're really limiting the amount of people that would be willing to buy this palette because of that. But anyway, those are kind of my issues with it. I'm going to swatch the colors for you real quick. Here are the two concealers. You have light and medium. Your two lip glosses. You have nude and pink. Kind of meh on those so far. Here are the eyeshadow colors. You have the highlight the pinky neutral, the brown, and the black. Those actually look pretty nice. They are slightly powdery. All right, and here is your blush, bronzer, and highlight. I really like the bronzer color. That's really pretty. I love that freaking highlight. It's beautiful. That neon, orangey, hot, pink, 90s, I do not know about this blush, you guys. I'm going to go ahead and use the concealer that will go ahead and match me, and that is the light one. And I am just grabbing this big, fluffy Real Techniques crease brush because it's what I like to use for concealer. And I'm going to go in and grab some of that. Going to pop this on, and wow, that is light even for me. Okay, that is really light. Okay, can you guys see what is going on there? That is not, we're not having great coverage. Let me see. Nope, the medium is going to be too dark. Well, no, medium is definitely too dark. Um, I'm not getting great coverage with this. Let me try. Beauty blender. Okay, this is clinging on to dry skin right now and I'm not getting a ton of coverage at all. So I'm just taking my Beauty Blender into this concealer and doing what I can with it. But yeah, I do not like that concealer very much at all. It looks so-so on camera, but it really does not look good close up. I think the Beauty Blender is this concealer is only saving grace right now. All right, so the concealer is kind of a fail. I am going to go ahead and set that with my NYX HD Finishing Powder, which will hopefully make it not look quite as bad. Okay, that helps a little bit. But yeah, all this managed to do was to emphasize the texture underneath my eyes and the dryness and didn't do much for covering it anything at all, really. I'm getting worried, you guys. I wanted to love this palette. I wanted to be like, this is so much better than everyone said it was, etc., etc. We'll see. Okay, so right now I'm going to take, not that one, I'm going to take my Real Techniques Expert Face Brush and go into this bronzer, which, guys, that's like fall out everywhere. Wow. Okay. We're going to like, okay, the color itself isn't bad. A little orangey, just a smidge orangey. It's blending out fairly well though. Mind you, 90% of the product I got in my brush is on the floor now, but it's pretty and it blends well, so that's good. My hairline. Okay, so the formula is blending out well, but it is really freaking powdery, like way too powdery, especially for a travel palette. You're not going to want to be on a plane or in the car and having crap go everywhere. So I'm not very pleased with that. Going to very carefully go, guys, I am just 
touching this in and that blush is going everywhere. Okay, the blush is not blending out as well as the bronzer did. It's just kind of sitting there on my cheek, unfortunately. All right, guys, um, let's give this highlight a shot. I'm going in with my Real Techniques contour brush, which is what I use for my highlight. The highlighter isn't as powdery. That's really pretty, but it's also just a little, little glittery. It's pretty, but you can see like I have a spot on my cheek and it's really bringing that out quite a bit. And my highlighters normally don't do that. It's definitely not super subtle highlight if that's what you want for the day. You know me, the more highlight, the better half the time. There's something about the formulation of this where it looks less like highlight and more like a super finely milled glitter. Like if you're going for the full on unicorn effect, yeah. But no, okay. I was going to try the eyeshadows in this, but I think I'm going to skip that and go ahead and use the eyeshadow palette that we got, the warm one. For my final thoughts on this palette, not worth money. This is $30, you guys. You can buy so many good palettes for right around 40 that spending 30 on this, mm -mm, absolutely not worth it in my opinion. Um, definitely won't purchase it again. Not a huge fan of it. I mean, it looks okay from a distance, but it doesn't look like what you would expect from that expensive of a palette. And I know you're paying for the name with the collaboration, but I also expect quality. I care more about quality than a name. And I definitely don't think the quality is here in this palette, to be completely honest. But let's move on. I haven't given up hope yet. All right, now we are testing out the warm palette. This is a really, really pretty eyeshadow palette. I like the packaging. It's the same as their City Minis. Now, I have not tried any of their City Mini palettes to compare, but I'm going to kind of attempt to do a full look with this. Let me swatch the shades for you guys real quick. We have a pretty champagne shade, this kind of nude shade, a peach coppery sparkle, which is really pretty, a matte peach shade, it's really pretty gold, this really pretty rich chocolate brown. So these are actually swatching really, really nicely. So that gives me hope. I don't have any primer on my eyes. I just popped a little bit of um, my foundation from my beauty blender on my eyes earlier. So we're going with that. And I'm just going to start by grabbing a Real Techniques fluffy brush and I'm going into this light little shade here. Tons of fallout right in the palette again. I'm very gentle with my shadows. Oh, that color is pretty though. Look at that, that's pretty. And it's blending out well. Okay, now this palette was way more expensive than I thought it would be. I was pretty sure that the regular City Mays were right around $9, $10, but this one was $14.99, which is, again, a lot for that amount of shadows, especially from drugstore. Okay, that peach is really pretty, though. Or not the peach, but the taupe shade. Okay, next I'm going to take a very small little brush and go in with this brown and I just want to take this on that outer corner okay I'm not loving this brown Ugh. okay I'm going to grab a bigger brush and see if I can blend this out because this brown is kind of like clinging everywhere see that it's not really blending very well Oh my gosh, that is really weird. Okay, what we're gonna do is I'm going to take that brown shadow off real quick because clearly it is not cooperating and I'm going to grab a clean brush and I'm going straight into that beautiful bright gold shade. 
which looks copper in your eye, not gold. That's interesting. It looks gold in the pan and then turns totally copper on your lid. Oh, that's beautiful though. Okay, so that brown kind of sucks, but this copper is gorgeous. I just want to point out real quick, guys, that even though I set that concealer, it is creasing like heck. That is creasing like crazy underneath my eyes. I really don't know if I want to use that as a highlight shade everywhere like I normally do. I'm going to grab just a small detailer brush and go into that champagne shade and pop that on my inner corner. And oddly enough, that champagne shade also looks a little more gold than champagne. Huh, interesting. I'm gonna give this brown another shot. I'm taking a little flat shader brush. I'm going to take this brown right underneath my lash line. Okay, that's pretty. Okay, see, I like the way that looks better. And I'm going to very lightly go into this, knock most of it off, and just try adding that into my crease. Just to deepen it up. Okay, that's looking better. I think dark matte shades are very tricky to get to where they blend well. So I think that this brown just needs to be layered on top of a couple more eyeshadows to really blend out as well as it could. There we go, that's prettier. All right, not bad. So far I am liking this palette a whole lot better than I like the Jet Setter palette. I do think it comes with some very pretty colors. It's very warm, um, very, very glittery though. I would have maybe done like one less metallic shade Possibly, just because it's kind of hard to put a whole eye look together, but I do think it's very, very pretty. But still, I'm kind of mixed on it. I do think it's overly expensive for the quality you're getting. The next product I have to try is the eyeliner, which I am excited about because when I swatch this, it's a nude, but it's like a highlight nude. So I'm really excited to try this. I'm just going to pop this in my waterline. That is really pretty. Oh, I like that. We'll have to see how long it lasts though. It is a gel based eyeliner, but it is very, very pretty. I like the color with it. And I kind of like that it reflects a bit. So I am going to try the mascara that came in the palette really quick. So this is kind of all over the place, guys. I'm actually kind of really disappointed. I was hoping that the Jet Setter palette would be really good. I noticed already just from doing my other makeup, that all of this is starting to fade already. I just put it on like less than probably 10 minutes ago. So here is the Colossal Volume Express Mascara, which I've never tried. It is a giant wand. And Maybelline usually hits out of the park nine times out of 10 on mascaras. So, ooh, that's pretty though. Okay. I'm not seeing it building a lot of volume to be honest but it's doing very nice for the lengthening. Oh, and there it goes on my eyelid, of course. All right, so far, I actually really like the mascara. Um, for volumizing mascara, it doesn't do anything on volume. It gives me a very natural, kind of almost dolly look. It makes my lashes look very long and separated. So I do like the mascara. And we do have one more product to try, and that is the lipstick in the shade Lonnie. This is a gorgeous lipstick. I love the packaging, and the color is beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and just swatch this on the back of my hand. It looks like a creamy matte almost, and this is a very beautiful true red color. I wanted to try one of the nudes, but the store didn't have any, and they only had one of the lip liners, and it wasn't the one that matched this. So, we're going to give this a shot, though. Nine times out of ten, I love Maybelline lipsticks, so let's see.
since I don't have a liner to go with this, I am going to grab a brush just to clamp those edges. All right, so like any red, it is a bit tricky to apply, but that color is gorgeous. The formula is very nice. Feels very creamy, very smooth. It looks um, like a satin finish, not necessarily a matte. Um, of course, not kiss proof by any means. But it is very pretty. It makes my lips look very full and healthy. And I do love the color. I think it will be gorgeous for holidays coming up. So I am a big fan of the lipstick. I believe the lipstick's $8.99, which I think is a little bit more expensive, again, than your standard Maybelline. But that's to be expected when you have a big name collaboration. So let me see how everything is wearing now that my makeup is fully done. All right guys, so my final thoughts are Jet Setter Palette, pass. I won't waste the money on it. I really wouldn't. With the brushes pretty much being unusable, the palette sizes in here on these, and just the particular color choices, I don't think this is a great all-in-one, on-the-go kind of palette, which is what it's marketed to be. And the wear, obviously, my highlight is almost gone at this point, and so is the blush just from putting on my eye makeup and as you can see I barely like occasionally touch my face so to me that's a big issue I need my makeup to be very 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 long wearing so I will pass on the jet setter as for this little warm palette I do like it I think it's okay um do I think it's worth $15 no I think there are better palettes at the drugstore you can get and I'm just kind of meh on it. I don't love it. The eyeliner is beautiful. It makes my eyes look very bright, very awake. I love that it's not just nude, but it has some highlight to it. I think it's very pretty, and I would definitely recommend grabbing this if you like to do a bright waterline. And as for the lipstick, I definitely love the lipstick. Of course, like all reds, it is a little bit tricky to apply, so I would recommend making sure you have a matching lip liner on hand or a lip brush just to make it a little bit easier. But the formula is very, very pretty. I love the color, and it's very comfortable to wear. And I think it's very flattering, especially if you have natural lips that haven't been felt. So you do have those lip wrinkles, like everyone has. Um, it kind of diminishes those, makes your lips look a little bit plumper, which I absolutely love. I'm a huge fan of lipsticks that do that. So those are my final thoughts on the collection. Absolutely no hate at all whatsoever to Maybelline. They're actually one of my very favorite drugstore brands. I just think that the Jet Setter could have been rethought just a little bit. I think some little tweaks, some little changes, and maybe using some more universal shades or offering two or three versions of the Jet Setter for different complexions would have really made that palette more worth the money, if that makes sense. So I hope that you guys found this helpful. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, or just want to say hi, I would love to hear from you down in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can also keep up with me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat. I'm pretty much everywhere, and all the links for those are down below. Thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I will see you again very, very soon. Bye.